Welcome to the D-backs Weekly Inside the Game podcast. I'm Bob King Panaris, and my co-host is Brian Cano Sr. Brian and I are both credentialed media members of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Brian, Bob, glad to be here today. Uh, you know, uh, it's been a it's been a tough week for the D-backs, and uh, I'm I'm grateful to be re- reporting. And sometimes the reporting is a little bit. Uh, it's got a little more flavor to it, but let's get to, I just, I thought we'd start off with the trades because that's where we left off on the, the last, uh, I, I was a little concerned that before the trade deadline, the D-backs weren't going to make any trades and, you know, I, I was right. uh, and not anticipating what we got. So on the 31st, uh, uh, the D-backs picked up Paul Seawald from the Mariners. They gave up Rojas and one of our favorites, uh, Dominic Canzone, who has, yep. one of the, has one of the sweetest swings and one of the strongest arms that, that was on the D-backs. Uh, and then Ryan Bliss. And of course, on the 31st, that same day, they got Peterson. From the A's, and they gave up Patrick. And then the day later, on the first, they gave up um, the sheriff. They traded the sheriff for Peter Sprezlecki. And then, of course, on the first, the uh, last trade the D-backs made was Tommy Pham, who was acquired from the Mets. In place, uh, they gave up the 17-year-old infielder Jeremy Rodriguez. You know, any thoughts on any of those trades specifically, Bob? Because I, I liked it. I thought they were aggressive. I thought they did the best they could for what was available. And I think that what they did was made the team a little bit better. It didn't show this week, obviously, but those are my thoughts. Well, I, I thought the the pickup of the closer was a uh, was a good move. <clears throat> I mean, we'll talk about what he did yesterday a little yes, bit later, <laughs> but but um, I, of course, like you, I didn't like giving up Canzone, but you know what? You gotta you gotta give up something to get something, and that's what they did. They they were aggressive. Like like you mentioned already, I wouldn't didn't think they were going to do anything there for a while, and finally, boom, it happened. The 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 one that I still am scratching my head over is why they picked up Tommy Pham. No idea when you have a boatload or a crap load, whatever you want to call it, of outfielders right now, and you have some pretty good outfielders, and you know that one i'm still scratching my head over to this day and we're almost a week later right we are a week yeah. later you yeah, know tommy fam is uh, it was an unusual pickup toward the end of the uh, the deadline there and you know bobby he's had four games he's had 14 at bats he's got one hit one rbi and he's been struck out six times those are the bottom line facts and again we don't necessarily do uh, stats around here but at the same time it's always good for us to keep up um you know i thought that the trade was uh beneficial in some ways. I thought the D-backs strengthened themselves in the bullpen with Seawald. Now, obviously, they put him out in a 10. They're down, I think, 10-1 when they put him out the other night against the Twins, and he struck out the side. So I did see some promise, but when he, well, we could talk more about what he did yesterday. But, um, you know, uh, you know, I just, uh, the Rojas loss, it, was, it stung. Baseball is that, that's what baseball is. It's a, it's a business. And, you know, I know Josh Rojas is a, is a was one of my favorites, a Valley native, and, you know, went to high school around here, played junior college ball around here. And then was playing for his favorite team, you know, and then, you know, he's off to Seattle. Same with Canzone and Bliss, but that's baseball. And for that, we have a closer now. And and I'm, I'm grateful that uh, Mike Hazen and the rest of the gang over there at the uh, D-backs uh, headquarters decided to make some moves. And, and I praise them for that, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, however, um, you know, let's talk a little bit about because we only have 30 minutes. We could go for two hours on this one. But we, you know, let's talk about, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no yeah. kidding, man, ugly. Let's talk about the weekend review. Okay, the weekend review started on Thursday. Do we have to? Well, we have to. Well, I mean, I really don't want to. Let's talk about the, the Tuesday game, actually, August 1st. Um, you know, it was a it was a promising game. Um, you know, Gallon goes out there and throws 91 pitches, 59 strikes. And Lamont Wayne Jr. comes in there and Castro, our reliever, um, goes in there and gives up a homer, and then he backs into blues in that game four three. I'm not calling anybody out, but I'm just saying that you know Zach Allen has been reasonably decent, and the pitching hasn't been the problem. The D backs can only muster three runs, and for me, um, it shouldn't come to that. But that's the bottom line. They lost four three on Tuesday. Yeah, that was the uh, that was the uh, first game that they lost in the six game losing streak. Um... Yeah, they they had opened up and they won finally, right? They opened up and they won the first game and then they lose the next six on the road. Yeah, but you're right. Uh, that Tuesday night game almost set the tone for the for the whole darn week. Yeah, 
No, it, it, you know, I was a little disappointed that Castro left it up in the zone. You and I have talked about Castro's uh, yeah. technique and his stride. Bob, you've mentioned his strides a lot. And I think for me anyway, when I see Castro's uh, off-speed pitches go above the knees, I get scared because those set, tend to be hit really hard. And um, and with that, the ones he throws in the dirt with two strikes, a lot of times they swing and miss. And he, I think many of his strikeouts have come for that. I, I mean, I'm not a stats guy, but yeah. I would imagine yeah. that's the case. Yeah, you're so, right. You're right. And uh, uh, the way I look at it, they still haven't corrected that 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 stride. They they haven't done it because I think the guy would be lights out again if they just corrected that. And I don't know what what they're looking at, but they're not seeing it. I, I see it plain as day. Yeah. You know, you know, you and I will have to probably sit down one of these afternoons and spend an hour or two. And I really don't want to spend that much time talking about it, but figuring out where those pitchers are located, what's he missing on and what he's been missing on. Because I mean, if the D-back staff isn't doing the homework, maybe you and I should do it for them. Uh, anyway, let's talk a little bit about the Wednesday game Um, for two D-backs. D-backs jump on them two, two zip first inning, Gurriel ground rule double. Perdomo scores. Peterson, the new guy, new Chase Peterson from the A's, comes in and singles and gets Gurriel home in the first inning. Right. That's it. That's yeah. it. That was the offense for the day. The D-backs end up losing the game four to two. Now, I'm going to say this much, Bob. Slade Ciccone, the rookie, the new guy, he's uh, pitched 4.2 innings, get four hits and two runs. And I think um, coming off the heels of a loss like they did on Tuesday, he did pretty well. I thought he pitched well, right? Yeah. I, I mean, okay, gave up two runs, but you know what? Two runs is nothing. They should be able to score that in their sleep. Two you runs, know, <laughs> two runs in the first inning, Bob. And again, uh, that was the the bulk of the scoring, you know. And for yeah. me, anyway, I just I'm, I'm disappointed that the and I'm guys... saying I'm I'm just saying to make that up. Okay, you're down four two, but you should be able to make that up. You had plenty of time to do it. Oh yeah. I mean, to not score in the eight preceding inning, you know, after the after those two runs in the first, uh, to me, it just it doesn't bode well, you know. And obviously, going into game three um, on Thursday, it, it it carried over. You know, I don't even know what happened. I don't. It doesn't matter who pitched. It could have been uh, Randy Johnson on the hill. When you don't score any runs, you're not going to win any games. And the D-backs were shut out on Thursday, one to zero. They got two yeah. hits, Bob. They got two hits in that ball game, and you know. Uh, I don't know what the fight was like going to Minnesota, but um, when you get two hits and you lose one zero, it's tough to, it's a tough pill to swallow. That had yeah. to be tough. Yeah. yeah. Horrible. And uh, you know, that, then you mentioned they, they go to Minnesota on to Minnesota. Right. Yeah. And you figure, okay, I'm figuring, okay, they got a good chance with this Minnesota team. I said, they're not that good. They're in a really weak division, <laughs> you know, and yeah. boom. They get swept, swept, yeah. swept, swept, swept. But you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm frank, be frank. On on Friday, they 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 were up two one after four. I'm thinking to myself, okay, here we go. We got a shot. They're playing well, but they were held scoreless the rest of the game. I mean, after that, that was it. They get their runs, and and then they they get shut down. And right. you know, and and we can talk about the specifics of you know, because this is a team sport. You can't for me as a former coach and at a very minute level. I would imagine that it's difficult to pinpoint and place the emphasis on one particular player because it really doesn't bode well for the organization when you do that. But there are players that I could talk about right now, but I won't yet. But we'll talk about maybe batting averages in some of the areas like the, the middle of the lineup, for example, you know, the Walker, you got Guriel, you know, uh, Marte. Right. So, you know, we, we can talk more about them later on, but the D-backs um, on Saturday, the fifth, they, they, um, they lost 12 to one, Bob. And that it was the ugliest oh, game terrible. that I have seen all season. And in many ways, um, the frustration uh, must have been, you know, and, and I like, you know, Tori, he's a great manager. And, you know, I'm starting to feel for him a little bit just because I, I think that the D backs have done a lot of things to promote a, a, a better organization. What they're, they're trying. If I was working for the D, I'd say, hey, at least they're trying, they're making moves. They're, they're bringing people up. They're doing some stuff. They're trying here. They're ship. Yeah. But, you know, if the players just aren't getting it done, that's one thing. But I saw that in that ugly loss. And they were out hit 17 to 2. The score was yeah. bad enough, 12-1, but 17 to 2 on the hits. Right. And the, and the only run was a Guriel home run, who seems to be coming around again as well. But he's the only one. And uh, I, I I don't know. They're, they're just not hitting. They're the 
at all. I I'd be questioning right now these the hitting coaches. Uh, I am literally surprised sitting here, and this is Monday afternoon, uh, the seventh of August, and I am totally shocked that I haven't seen an email acro- come across my phone here that says we are replacing the hitting coaches, yeah. and. Uh, uh, they're they're not making a statement now. We love Tory, okay. As a person, we think he's great. You think that he's uh, blowing up in the clubhouse already? Yeah. I don't know. Um, the question I was going to ask tomorrow is: I've been told by many people not to ask that question because you'll probably get banned from from the Diamondbacks but <laughs> but you know I I still I won't ask the question but as we sit here on a podcast I can I can ask the question to you uh is do you think that this team has quit on Tory you know Bob that's a great question I just you know based on uh, you know I I personally no my feeling is that it, it it definitely illustrates it in their play currently. However, they they being as young as they are, and uh, I'm not going to make any excuses because this is a professional sport. They're expected to show up, do their job, put on your hat, work hard every right. day, and make it work. Uh, at the same time, they're they're young and they're impressionable. They're working hard. And Tories, uh, you know, to me, I look like he may have gotten in their ear at least before the game yesterday. You know, um, because coming off that that, that terrible loss, I told you personally, I said, hey. I don't know if it was Danny or if it was Tory, but someone may have been pretty vocal in that dugout or afterwards in a meeting or independently, maybe one-on-one uh, to let them know, because this is really important stuff. And it showed Bob on Sunday, they lost yesterday, five to three. Okay. Um, now it, it was a good ball game. And the reason I say that is because the D-backs didn't lose hope. And in the ninth inning, Walker comes up there. He's been struggling. You and I have been talking about he has a his lack of yeah. you know, competitive bats. Um, and he comes across and, you know, he belts a line drive into left field and for the homer. And that whole dugout, Tory, everybody, it was they got they were lifted. You could see it. I could say, wow, you know, they're, they're going to be coming back to Phoenix playing the Dodgers and they're going to have this momentum with them. And I could, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a peak. And unfortunately, um, you know, it was followed by a valley when, you know, Seawall, our closer, comes in there and, you know, his first pitch is uh, blasted first over pitch. the fence. <laughs> yeah, know, for and, a tie game. <laughs> and two, two batters later, the game's over. You know, and, and then all those uh, long faces that dug out all over again. You know, and so I saw that peak in that valley, that peak in that valley, and it's tough to to uh, to watch as a, as a, as a business uh, owner because I know that if I can tell how my uh, team – looks by just their attitudes when I come around, I can tell how well my business is doing. Right. And frankly, I would like to see a little more consistency in the overall demeanor of the players where if the, you know, someone was to turn on the tube, even if they're down 12 to one, you couldn't tell based on their attitudes, you know, and um, you know, it's just something that I prefer, but you know, um, baseball is a failure sport, Bob. Um, yeah. The guys are going to fail a lot more than they're going to succeed and how they handle that adversity you know, is important. So I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, Tory will continue to uh, guide them uh, with a, not only mindfulness, but also a firm hand um, every now and then to remind them who his boss and how yeah. important his role is with the club. And, and, and again, I'm a D-backs guy and Bob, so yeah. are you. I, oh I, yeah, I, absolutely. Hey, listen, I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm a homer, right? Right. Uh, but I do want to see them win. Right. You know, I, 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 I'd love that they were on a 10 game winning streak right now, yeah. you know, uh, but we're also tell, we tell it the way it is, right? We see something, we're going to say something. And, uh, you know, that's the thing. And that, that's what people tuning in here to our podcast, I would hope that they, they understand is we're going to say what we feel because we say it from our hearts and we're not stats guys, you know, now, if we wanted to be stats guys, I can say the diamondbacks right now in the last 32 games are the worst team in baseball. And that's a fact. They are nine and 23. 
That's horrible. Yeah, no, they, they have not played well since the All Star break, and even subsequent to the All Star break, they were oh, looking way you know, before that. Yeah, you know, and I and again, you and I will hit on some more. I again, based on one of my comments earlier about not talking specifically about certain players, my feeling is back in early mid July after a, the Detroit Tiger series, the D backs made some changes that, in my opinion, may have disrupted some of the process that was being yeah. made. You know, and I don't want to hit on any names right now, but subsequent to that decision, the D backs chemistry seemed to be a little bit different. And, um, you know, and, and, you know, Moreno's on the injured list and he, you know, provides a lot of hits. Let's say, let's see, uh, and not being stats guys, I know Moreno is, uh, before he was injured, uh, let's see here, he's hitting uh, in 74 games, 222 at bats, had 60 hits with 11 doubles, three homers, 28 RBIs. He struck out 54 times. So he's putting the ball in play. And, you know, I, I really hope that he comes back from his injury soon, you know, and it's going to put the D-backs in a position to have to put Herrera or, uh, you know, Herrera probably back to, to Reno. But I'm just going to go as far as saying this. Carson Kelly's played 30 games. He's had 76 at-bats, 15 hits, two doubles, one home run, six RBIs. He's sitting 197 uh, with an OPS of, uh, let's see here, he's got an OPS of, I think, 507. Meanwhile, Herrera's played 32 games. He's got 75 at bats, 16 hits, four doubles, uh, seven RBIs, and he struck out 23 times. And, you know, and, and Kelly's, by the way, struck out 21 times. So between Kelly and Herrera, there's not much difference as it relates to the offense. Um, and, you know, it's going to be, you know, up to the D-backs where they go with that decision. But they're definitely going to have to make that decision soon because I hope Moreno comes back and gives the team a lift uh, on the offensive end. What are your thoughts? Well, <sighs> First of all, let's take Kelly. You know, you mentioned that, you know, what he's given the team and what he's get, what he's given the team is nothing, all right? Batting 197, he was at 167, I think, uh, you know, not that long ago. So he's given him nothing. And what one thing I don't like about Kelly, he's not a very good catcher behind the plate. He really isn't. He doesn't he doesn't really block a lot of balls. He doesn't throw out many runners. I think he's only thrown out two runners since he's been back. And that's nothing. Where Moreno before when they brought up Kelly, and that's why I could never figure this one out, Brian. They once they brought up Kelly, they started playing him. You take a guy out of the lineup who was leading, I believe he was leading the league or maybe even the majors with throwing out base runners. I think it was like way above 50%. And uh, just, just not only did he, did he provide the hits and the offense, but he was great behind the plate. Yeah. I think the way he handled the pitching staff was getting better and better as well, despite maybe some of the short, some of the issues that may or may may not be a, there for the D-backs as it relates to, you know, the, the, the communication. Um, I just think that the there's this unspoken way that catchers communicate with their pitchers and very nonverbal. And um, and I thought that, you know, Herrera and and uh, Marino both uh, exemplified that throughout the beginning of the season up until that Detroit series. And I remember Herrera running down first baseline, tracking down a ball that was overthrown, and then winging it over a third and getting Baez at third base. I said to myself – that's the kind of catcher I would like to have. I mean, I, hope, I wish he could hit a little bit better, but at the same time, what a, what an effort, you know? And so with that, you know, he went down uh, to the minors, I think the very next day, but anyway, uh, I, those are just, again, we talk about things that we feel. And again, the D-backs have done a magnificent job this season of making the team a little bit better. Now the players themselves, I think have to be more accountable for their actions. The D-backs have, have uh, invested uh, in the team and they continue to invest um, right. in the in the club and and for that uh I think that the valley should be very grateful that we have the d-backs in town because that that shows they want to win but at the same time I hope the d-backs recognize that the fans in the valley can sometimes be fickle they right. uh they they may not uh you know hang around for for a long time if uh, they can't get it together and with that being said Bob let's talk a little bit about the week to come we've got the um, right. We and and can I point? I I like to point something out though, because yeah. with with some po with with a positive first before yeah. we before we go on to uh, uh, this week in in baseball, if you want to call it that. Um, even as bad, and I mentioned nine and twenty three in the last thirty two, 
this team is still only one and a half games back in the wild card spot. So if they can, if they can get this going again, they can still very well make the playoffs. Now they have a tough schedule. They got a lot of games on the road as they finish out this year. And, and as a matter of fact, even that last homestand, and then we'll get on to this week, but that last homestand of the year is three games, three games. Wait, I almost, I almost put up two, three games against the Houston Astros. Okay. Now we know if this team is playing good, they can beat anybody. So I, I just wanted to give the positives. Now, Go ahead, Brian. Let's bring on this week. It's a tough week, Bob, but I think like you just pointed out, this is an opportunity. My feeling is, you know, that this these challenges that they're up against, it presents an opportunity for them to, you know, it's hard to fall off the floor, Bob. That's all I can say. So with that being said, they've got their hands, uh, they've got them full this week. They got the Dodgers in town on Tuesday and Wednesday, two game series, and then they go Friday, Saturday, and Sunday against the Padres. Now, that's five games against National League West Division opponents and rivals where, you know, anything can happen here. You know, you you know, I don't want to go as far as saying they're going to win or lose any of these games. But my hope is that we'll see a much more competitive effort at the plate, uh, that they'll, you know, swing at strikes and let bad pitchers go by, uh, you know, ready to ready to score a few runs. Because like you said earlier, they're dangerous. They can beat anybody. When they have runners on McCarthy and Carroll, and those, I mean, I don't even know what those pitchers and catchers must be thinking because those guys are just, they get a big lead and they're gone, boom. And then they, and then they get the third on a bad throw. Before you yeah. know it, you know, you're right there ready to score. Look what they did yesterday. Eight stolen bases. In the, was it yesterday or the day before? No, yesterday. was it, I thought it was 10 stolen bases. Well, I had a club record. I know the record was seven, and I think they ended up with eight at the end of the day. You may be right on 10. But it's a, it was a franchise record, you know, right. and and frankly that to, and then to not win that game is a, is a, it's you know it's devastating in some cases. Right. But for these young guys, I think it's a learning process for them. I think they'll continue to develop. It's tough to watch sometimes because as a you know as a reporter, I I really watch the entire game and some of the nuances that maybe others don't. But the individual attitudes and you know the 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 shoulders and the heads down and. You know, you know, and I'm, I'm going to contrast that with this. Look, I know Tommy Pham isn't the best of uh, offensive players as of yet, uh, but he comes to the D-backs, uh, to me anyway, with this quality that's really hard to train. Um, and, and once you've trained it, uh, it's there. But he's, he, you know, I noticed he's by the, by the dugout steps with the, with the Tory. He's into the game. And uh, and that, I think, comes from where he came from, the, the Mets and, and uh, Buck Showalter. I think Bucky uh, is a... Is a a disciplinarian type of coach. And I think that's the level of expectation that, uh, that, that Tommy Pham had just come over from the, the, another team that expects that. And so when it's noticeably different on our end, you know, for me anyway, to see that there's players that are that in tune to the game, even though they're not in the ball game, that leads me to believe that that player is prepared to be in the game. And, uh, and so with that being said, I just hope that the, that even despite Tommy Pham's shortcomings at the plate, that is, his presence will will rub off on some of the younger players, and um, they'll take because the, he's older. You know, he's running out of time, Bob. Yeah, and and no, and he maybe he's embracing these moments, and that's where maybe some of the younger guys can maybe learn from. But I like Tommy Fowl. I hope the best for him. I hope the best for the D backs. I'm going to be there anyway on Tuesday and Wednesday. You and I are going to report. You know, and obviously yep. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday we're going to come back on Monday, and we're going to report. And I'm looking forward to reporting on some um, some progress. Um, I'm not going to talk about wins and losses today. I just like to see some progress and some, actually, I'd like to see the guys having fun again. I think that uh, winning I, yeah, happens when they're having fun. You know, I was thinking the same thing. And I was thinking that uh, uh, Tori needs to walk in that pregame tomorrow and walk into his clubhouse with a big smile on his face and say, okay, guys, we started over. New season starts today. And I would say it just like that. New season starts today. We are zero and zero. Let's go out and have a winning record. Well, I'll put it in play, man. Make some ha- make something happen. Have a great little chaos. And again, I cannot stress enough the importance that the that our audience understands completely that we are homers. And 
we will be critical when need be, but we will also praise when 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 available. When it's time to praise, we're going to do the same thing. But this last week has been tough, and we saw a lot of ugliness, and we're hoping that that doesn't um, seep into this week. And I'm very confident in the D-backs that they will um, overcome these these last few games and 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 develop and go on a run here. Like you said, they're not that far out of it, Bob. I'm hoping that we come back next week and they're less than a game and a half uh, out of the okay. wild card. Game and a half out is nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Well, I think, uh, you know, Bob, I think we're going to wrap it up. Uh, do you want to talk about our guests we're going to have uh, coming in? Uh, next week, yeah, we will be doing an interview with uh, Tim Haggerty. He's written a book on, and I'll call the book Factoids. So it's really uh, a thousand and one, and I'll call it Factoids. Uh, and it's called Tales from the Dugout. So we're going to hear from Tim Haggerty. Tim Haggerty is not only an author, but he has been uh, the broadcast voice of the El Paso Chihuahuas for 19 seasons, I believe. And he looks so young when you see his picture. <laughs> Um, that uh, it's hard to believe it's 19 years, but uh, it should be, uh, uh, you know, fun, exciting. And the Chihuahuas are the AAA team of the San Diego Padres. So he's seen a lot of our AAA team. He's going to have a lot. He's going to know a lot about the Diamondbacks. As well. Yeah, it's going to be awesome to get Tim's perspective on the D-backs and, you know, obviously with the Chihuahuas being the AAA club for the Padres, he has a lot of insight onto the Padres, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, it's good to get to know the other clubs a little bit. And then I'd like, like I said, get the perspective on on what he thinks about our D-backs this season and and their pros prospects. You know, I don't want to talk about next season yet, but, you know, obviously there's going to be a next season. Um, yeah. Sun comes up. So with that, maybe we'll have to talk about that down the road uh, stuff to, in during the interview as well. Absolutely. Um, anyway, Bob, uh, it's been a great show. Uh, do you want to sound off? Well, it's always fun uh, if, <laughs> for folks joining us here on uh, D-backs Weekly Inside the Game. Uh, this is Bob King Paneris. Stay safe, everybody. <laughs>